Today I'm going to show you a manipulative that I think can help us with teaching our students how to add with regrouping. I found it on Pinterest and I was so excited that I, uh, it made me want to become a primary teacher. And then I realized I don't have to do that because there are a few of my students who could benefit from this, this too, even in the fourth grade. Um, I don't think it was made here in the States. I think the person who thought it up is from another country because in every example, um, it's, in a different, it's in a different language and it's not Spanish, maybe it's Italian. I don't know what it is. I only found one example where it's, it's in, um, in English. But I think if you look up on Pinterest, double digit addition manipulative, it should come up. But let me show you my very crude example of it. I know that Stanley could make this so much better and it, it, wouldn't, it would look a lot neater, but he's so busy right now. He doesn't even know I made this. He won't see this until he edits this video. And I know what he's gonna say. He's gonna say, oh, Deneen, because we could, you know, he will look at it and instantly think of five ways to make it better. But I can't wait. I just have to share this with you because I think it can really help our students. So here it is. Have you seen this? They didn't put this on Pinterest, but I think that, I'm thinking maybe we should put the place value up above here, the ones in the tens, but here we go. Five plus seven is 12, and we can just put the one right here. And the students can see there is no place for the one. There, there's no, it doesn't go under the ones, it's not under the tens, we need to move it. And they just slide it up here. I could do this till the cows come home. It just makes me so happy to do that motion. And then they can add the tens place, which gives us a sum right here. Do you love this as much as I do? Zip it right on up. I saw someone make this with three digit by three digit. And another example had even four digit by four digit. Let me show you what another example of it was. It looked like they got a piece of white laminated paper and stuck it in here. And that way they could just write the numbers for each problem and then erase and, and, um, and re keep reusing it that way. But you want to make sure you have that one so they can actually move it up over here. Another example was bottle caps. It looked like someone had done this with bottle caps. Bottle caps. Now I don't have bottle caps. I have these little wooden pieces that I have magnets on the back of that I used for a, a class project previously. But here, let's do it with round pieces. That's fun too. Oh dear, I didn't have it taped. There it is. Okay, there's a seven. So six plus seven is thirteen but there's nowhere to put that one. And then here I'm going to have a four and a zero like that. So I would just slide this on up and then I will put down my five, but I don't have a five. Oh, I can use this five. Here, here's my five. Now I did it. It doesn't matter what numbers you use. It just matters that they get to use this and practice this skill. I'm trying to think if we could create one of these for subtraction because that is so important and it's so much more difficult for our students to subtract with regrouping than even addition. So if you can think of a way to do that, let me know. I'm thinking Stanley and I should make these and sell them. Then we could have some income. Wouldn't that be great? Can't you see a whole class doing this? Or even if you just bought seven of them and you had your small groups doing it? Oh, Stanley, I have so many ideas for you, but I know you're busy. But I hope that you will give this a try with your students. Um, like I said, I, I think we could make it with paper, but it's just so satisfying to try this thick, to hold this thick cardboard. But anything to help our students better understand the concepts of regrouping.